In this video, we are going to look into LangGraph, what it is, and how we can use it. We'll start by looking into why we even need LangGraph when we already have LangChain, which is now pretty well established in the LLM world. For the same reason, we'll also look into the difference between LangGraph and LangChain and when to choose between the two. We will then move on to the main elements or the building blocks of the LangGraph framework and look into nodes, edges, and states, which are the uh, fundamental components for building any graph in LangGraph. Then we will dip our hands and do some coding to, to build a simple graph. Once we build a simple graph, we will move on to building a React agent from scratch using LangGraph. So let's start by looking into why we even need LangGraph. I'm quite convinced that agentic AI is the future, or at least the foreseeable future of the AI world. And in order to build production ready complex AI agents, we need a framework in Python that makes our life quite easy. And I believe LangGraph is the one. And on top of that, LangGraph provide high control over the agent development process. And also it's turning out to be quite robust. I see it more like the uh, framework for building AI agents, similar to how PyTorch emerged into the go-to framework for building deep neural networks. So with that motivation, let's move on to their website and see what they say about LangGraph. LangGraph is used by Replit, Uber, Uber, LinkedIn, GitLab, and many more companies. It's a low-level orchestration framework built for controllable agents. It provides composable components to streamline LLM application development, and it's the library that enables orchestration. On top of that, it offers customizable architectures, long-term memory, and human-in-the-loop to reliably handle complex tasks. We will look into the human in the loop and long-term memory stuff in the later videos. But in this video, let's stick with building a simple graph in order to understand the fundamentals of the framework. So let's get started. One of the first questions that arises when we talk about LangGraph is that we already have LangChain, so why do we even need LangGraph? So when it comes to LangChain, the thing is, like the name suggests, it's a chaining library, meaning that operations are sequential, or in other words, they're more of directed acyclic graphs or DAGs as they are widely known. But when it comes to LangGraph, they help with cyclic execution, which is typical of complex agentic systems. And so it helps us build complex workflows. And also when it comes to state management, it's quite limited with LangChain. But when it comes to LangGraph, we can have explicit state management. And so it's quite robust when it comes to state management. And we can also add external persistent memory. And when it comes to building agentic systems with LangChain, we can build simple agent systems. But when we want to build complex agent systems that are quite graphical for which we need complete control, then LangGraph is your answer. So now that we are motivated to use LangGraph, let's look at some use cases actually. So typical use case for LangChain is that of, you know, summarization or question answering. But when it comes to LangChain, graph we can actually automate complex workflows and so we can build end-to-end -end agentic system so this is the huge advantage of learning lang graph before we start learning let's look into the autonomy challenge so if we plot the reliability versus autonomy we want our systems to be right here in the top right which indicates this, that the system is totally autonomous and it's quite reliable. With the LLMs, they are quite reliable these days, but the problem is they are very less autonomous. We can see in the autonomy scale, they are very close to zero, indicating that they are very less autonomous. The problem today is that as we increase the autonomy, the reliability of the system decreases, and so it becomes challenging to build agentic systems. And the current agentic systems lie somewhere here, but in the future, we want to push it all the way up to there so that our agentic systems are, you know, fully autonomous and are quite reliable. With that in mind, let's look at what we're going to build today. We are going to start by building a simple graph using LangGraph, of course, in order to understand the syntax and the nuances of LangGraph. So we will write a start node 
we'll write the end node and in the middle we'll write node 1 node 2 and node 3 and we will make them communicate with each other one of the other concepts is called state state we can think of state as you know the state in uh, say a react framework where you have variables that are shared and, and can be modified back and forth the state plays a similar task here these are set of values that are shared by all the nodes and they can be modified as we progress along the graph in any of the directions so the main concept we need to learn is that that of state which is shared across different nodes and then we need to learn about nodes and we need to learn about edges the edges can be normal edges or conditional edges so a normal edge always flows in one direction for example from start to node 1 it's a normal edge but a conditional edge can branch off for example from node 1 we can either go to node 2 or we can go to node 3 and so this is a conditional edge this is where the decision making comes into play and node 1 has the power to decide whether we need to go in this direction or in this direction and that depends on the state when node 1 is acting on the user data that comes from the start node we will go deeper into this when we actually implement it for, but for now it's good to understand state nodes and edges so with that overview let's quickly get our hands dirty and look into implementing a simple graph in langgraph to get started i've created a directory called langgraph cc and if i do a ls minus al i've created a python notebook with the requirements.txt file and i've also created a dot n file in order to hold the environment variables so i'm going to now create a virtual environment with the name langgraph cc again with python 3.12 so it's creating the virtual environment so now that it has created the virtual environment i'm going to activate it i'm going to install the requirements pip install minus all requirements so that's going to sort out the virtual environment so the virtual environment is now sorted i'm just going to do jupyter notebook and it's going to launch in my browser so that opens the langgraph crash course.ipynb notebook so in order to load the environment variables obviously i'm using the dot env and i'm mainly loading the openai api key so make sure you set your openai api key in your dot env file and for the entire notebook i'm going to be using openai models so i'm going to run that and we need to start building the graph now the graph that we're going to build is a simple graph so we have a start node and a end node so these two nodes are mandatory in order to build any graph the flow is that we start and go to node 1 and we have this conditional branching to either node 2 or node 3 and both the nodes end up in the end node so let's go ahead and build that i'm going to import state graph start and end from landgraph.graph and in order to display the graph i'm going to be using this ipython notebook a display function let's start by defining the state first so the state is a type dict and in our simple case we have the graph state which is a string and once we define the state we will move on to building the nodes of course so we have three nodes node one node two and node three let's go ahead and define that each node as we can see takes in a state because the state is common across all of the nodes like we saw in the beginning of the video so we can define node 1 as something that takes in the state and then it updates the graph state so what we are planning to do is that the node 1 is going to be a 50 50 node which simply decides between node 2 and node 3 on a 50 50 probability so how we are going to do that is it's going to take the graph state and it's going to ask heads you win tails i win and if it's the node 2 we will pass the state again and in the node 2 it's heads in the node 3 again we'll take in the state and we will say it's tail so now that we have defined the nodes we can define the edges so for the edge we need to define what the decision making criteria is again th this function is going to take in the state and it only needs to literally return node 2 or node 3 because from node 1 we can only get to node 2 or node 3 not any other node or even the end so we need to fix that here by saying literally you need to return node 2 or node 3 and the simple decision we are doing is that we take the state and 
randomly, we're deciding based on the probability. If a random number is generated less than 0.5, we say it's not two. If it's more than 0.5, we're going to do not three. So that's our simple edge. Now we are ready to compile the graph. So in order to compile the graph, we need to create a builder, which is an object of the state graph. And that again takes in the state. We need to build a state graph. And first we need to add the nodes, which are nodes one, two, and three. And then we need to add the edges. So the edges go from start to node one. And from node two, it can use this function coin toss in order to decide between two edges. One of the edges leads to node two and the other edge needs to node three. And finally, once we have defined the edges and the nodes, we are ready to compile the graph. So we do builder.compile and we get the simple graph. By doing these steps, we have built our first simple graph in LangGraph. So now that we have compiled our graph, we can readily visualize it by just running this command. And we can see that we have the same graph that we defined here. The exact same graph is now implemented in the code. And we can see that for the conditional branching, there is a the line is a dotted line. When the edge is non-conditional, then it's a solid line. So in order to run the graph, we can do graph.invoke. And obviously we need to pass a state at the input. I'm just saying let's toss a coin. And if I run that, we can see that we are going to node one and node two. I'm just going to run it again. We can see that we are in node three now. We can keep running and we'll see that we'll change between node one and three because there's a 50 50 chance. So that's a simple graph that we have implemented in LangGraph. So what does implementing a React agent in the LangGraph framework look like? So we have a start node and we have an end node and then we have an AI assistant, which is obviously powered by a LLM, large language model, be it an open AI model or a cloud model or whatever be it. And then we have this tool and we can see that there's a conditional routing from the AI assistant to this one. And there's also a conditional routing from the AI agent to end. And the AI assistant keeps going in this loop, invocating any of the tools at its disposal until it's satisfied by this loop. And then it comes out of it and goes to the end node. So that's what we're going to implement now. So let's go ahead and do that. As we are now going to make use of an LLM, we need to import chat open AI from the Langchain OpenAI. And we also need a tool node. So the tool node is just a wrapper around any tool and also the tools condition. Now tools condition, if you look at the documentation, so tools condition is a function that takes the state as input and messages a key and returns either tools or leads us to the end node. Basically it enables us to route to the tool node if the last message has tool call, otherwise it routes to the end. So this is what we want. We either want to go to a tool node or we want to go to the end node. And also we need to define some tools. So before we look into the tools, like let's see what we're trying to do. Let's initialize the assistant. And for the assistant, the system message is, you are a helpful assistant tasked with performing arithmetic operations on a given set of inputs. So basically the assistant or the LLM is going to do arithmetic operations on the input. So we are going to create a node with the LLM assistant by passing the message. Obviously the LLM is a open AI model, which is GPT-40. Using the chat open AI class, we have created the LLM model. Now for the tools to do arithmetic, we can simply define functions, which are add, multiply and divide. They obviously just do basic arithmetic. We've just kept it very simple here. Once we have defined these functions for the tools, we create a list of all the tools and we pass the list to the LLM.bindTools function in order to bind all the tools to the LLM. So we now created a LLM and we also created the needed tools. And we have also bound all the tools that are required for the LLM. So with that, we can now move on to building the graph. So for the graph, obviously we will be using state graph to create the builder and we will be adding the assistant node and passing the assistant. All the tools we're going to be wrapping in the tool node and creating a tools node. And we're going to add that. And the edges, the start edge is going to lead to the assistant. 
let's quickly go back. You can see that there's only one route from start to the AI assistant. But from the assistant, we, we can either go to the end or we can go in this loop, which is a React loop. So let's see how we implement that. For that, we are adding conditional edges from the assistant to the tools condition. And this tools condition is going to take care of routing between the uh, tool call or the end node. So it's as simple as that. We just have to invoke the tools condition and previously we have already bound all the tools and so this is going to take care of looping between the uh, between the assistant and the tools n number of times and eventually we need to add the tools and the assistant and we can build the react graph so once we have the graph compiled we can display it and we can see that we have the start node and we have the assistant and from the assistant using the uh, tools condition we can either go to the tools node or we can go to the end node and these two are obviously conditional edges meaning that they are decided by the assistant and not decided by us so in order to run the graph we are giving this input content which is add seven and three multiply the output by two divide the output by five and we are creating a message there and we are invoking the react graph that we just created and we are passing the message and we are iterating through the entire message and printing the result and we can see that it's printing the human message which is add seven and three multiply the output by two divide the output by five and then from there it goes to the tool call which is to add because we have given add seven and three the tool add is invocated and the arguments are seven and three the output of the uh, tool is 10 and then again tool call multiply is invocated with the arguments 10 and 2 and then the output of the tool call is 20 after that again the tool call divide is invocated and the inputs are 20 and 5 and the final output is 4 so we get the final output as 4 so that's pretty much a simple implementation of the react graph so in the upcoming videos let's look into some advanced concepts and let's also look into imp implementing a workflow with a real world problem so until then i'm signing off and i will see you in my next video take care